Hi, welcome back to Art Unboxed. This week I want to show you my favorite chili recipe. Chili is one of those things that I like to make when maybe I don't have much energy or inspiration. It's very, very simple. It's just a few chops of onion and then everything else goes in the pan. It's also a great meal to make if we're low on food. Um, it's a pantry meal. You can get a lot of these things very, very easily. So it's sort of a good emergency meal to have on hand in your cooking arsenal. The ingredients in chili are super accessible and super simple. Um, they're also very affordable. So we have our chopped tomatoes. I have two kinds of beans because this is a vegetarian chili, so it's nice to kind of switch up those proteins. I've got black beans and pinto beans, but that's really variable. You can use whatever kind of beans you want whatever kind of beans you have on hand. Sometimes I use chickpeas, black-eyed peas, red beans, anything like that. Um, I have some frozen corn. You can also use canned corn if you want, but it gives it a really nice, sweet, fresh burst. Um, we add it at the end. What really makes chili interesting is the spices. So my recipe uses hot pepper flakes, cocoa powder, make sure it's unsweetened, cumin, and cinnamon. We're going to start with this onion. As always, we cut the ends off first. And then we have a nice solid base to cut on. Cut it in half, and we're going to use half the onion. The other half can go in the fridge for later. I'm going to peel off the papery skin and then I'm just going to go ahead and slice it along the natural lines of the onion. I'm holding the slices of onion together just so they don't um, fall apart and jump off the counter. And then I turn it around and go the other way across just to make a small dice. While I'm doing this, I'm going to turn on my pot to medium high heat. I'm going to get a little bit of oil going in there just to warm up those onions once they're cut. finish chopping up my onion here. Now always be very careful to tuck your fingers away from the knife. My onion's ready. I'm just going to throw it in the pot with the oil. And then once it's in there, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. That helps draw the moisture out of the onion and it creates another barrier between the onion and the heat. So you actually get a nice caramelized golden brown onion instead of a burned one. We're going to cook this up till it starts sizzling. It's going to let out some steam and it's going to turn, turn translucent. So as you can see, our onions are beautiful and translucent, which means slightly see-through. They're getting a little bit of golden brown. So now it's time to add our spicy peppers. If you don't like it very spicy, you can obviously do this to taste. I like a little bit of spice, and it really does calm down after cooking. I use cumin. So a nice little dump. I'm going to start with about two tablespoons worth. And we're also going to add some cinnamon at this point. The reason we're adding them now, cinnamon's going to be about the same as the cumin. The reason we're adding them now is that they're going to bloom in the oil and the heat, which means they're going to um, kind of come alive and the smell is going to be beautiful. We're going to coat the onions. 
with the hot oil and the spices and that'll infuse them with a really nice flavor. If you don't want this chili to just be vegetarian, if you want to add some ground beef at this point or um, another raw meat, uh, I would do it now. And then you saute it until it's done and browned. Since we're just doing vegetarian, I'm going to add my beans now. You're going to want to rinse these beans so they're not too starchy. Um, sometimes you get beans that are kind of stuck together because of all of that starch and it's really hard to rinse. So what I've discovered is that if you store them upside down in your pantry, they actually rinse a lot easier because that starch is concentrated at the top and then it gets shaken up. So I just want to sizzle up these beans with the spices and the onions for a minute. And then I'm going to add my tomatoes. I happen to have this funny box of tomatoes, um, but you can also use one of the large cans or two small cans. It doesn't really matter. Just add all of that and stir it up. One of the best things you can do for chili is just to let it cook for as long as you've got. Um, if you only have about 25 minutes, that's pretty good. If you have 40 minutes, an hour, that's really, really good because all those flavors can meld together. My secret ingredient here is unsweetened cocoa powder. If you don't have cocoa powder, you can also use um, unsweetened baking chocolate. If you've got any leftover from holiday baking or anything like that, that's fine too. I put about two generous spoonfuls in and then I stir it up before we let it cook. And if chocolate and cinnamon sound funny to you in a savory dish, just keep in mind those are pretty classic um, Mexican spices. If you think of mole, that's chocolate in a savory dish. So it's actually really, really delicious. Um, this so we're back. I've been able to let this chili go for about 45 minutes here. And we have this nice ring around where you can see where the liquid level was. And then you can see where the chili is. And that's because we've cooked out a lot of the water here. And that's really concentrated the flavors. All I'm going to do now is just... Add a nice shake of our frozen corn. I like to add this at the end so it doesn't um, get too cooked and murky because it's a really nice complement to the dark, rich flavors of the chocolate and the cinnamon to have a nice pop of fresh corn flavor. And that's really it. It's a really simple meal. You can step away and just do other things while it's cooking. So it's just a really low energy, low effort meal. This week, let's write a haiku about spice. Um, spice is really important in cooking and in life. Um, it's a nice metaphor. I hope this chili keeps you warm and cozy. I hope you give it a try. And I hope you join us next time for Art Unboxed.